go to where they're performing their wudu and watch after listening to me tonight. But take a handkerchief with you to wipe the tears. To wipe the tears. When you see what Gog and Magog have done. Inna ya'juja wa ma'juja mufsiduna fil ard, says Allah. Gog and Magog have been released into the world with this mission to corrupt. And in the process of corrupting to destroy. And they have corrupted your wudu and in the process of corrupting it they have destroyed it. But al-wudu miftahu salah Wudu is the key to salah. So if you've lost your wudu, what is the status of your salah? I ask you Ikhwan al-Muslimun in Egypt. I ask you Party Islam in Malaysia. I ask you Jamaat Islami in Pakistan. I ask you Salafi Muslims and Tabligh Jamaat and all the others who have this chip on the shoulder. What is the status of your Salat if you've lost your wudu? If the companions of the Prophet ﷺ were present today to see where wudu is being performed, I suspect that they would respond by picking up some big sticks and running us out of town. So this is not wudu, this is Gog and Magog. This is Gog and Magog wasting water. So much then for the introduction to our brothers and sisters who hold this position of spiritual arrogance with their views cast in concrete. We are superior. We are the elite. Is this connected with Dajjal? This disease which was there previously with Banu Israel, the Jews. That's their disease. And now it has come amongst us. We are the chosen people. <laughs> yes, it is connected with the job. And I want to take you now. Incidentally, it's time for you to study the subject of Gog and Magog. Because the corruption is not only water. The corruption is also the money that we are using that Saki was referring to. He didn't use the term that I used, but one day probably he will use it. I say of the modern monetary system of paper, plastic, and electronic money. And I can speak like this because I have studied international monetary e economics at two universities. I say of this paper money we are using that it is bogus, it is fraudulent, and it is utterly haram. When last have you ever heard some of their scholars say, say this? When last have you heard a Salafi scholar speak about the monetary system? That it is bogus and fraudulent and haram. When last have you heard Tablik Jamaat? Tablik Jamaat, which is the only Jamaat in the world, which believes that it can teach every subject under the sun. So it doesn't need Imran Hussein. So I'm not allowed to teach and to preach in any masjid controlled by Tablik Jamaat. No way in the world. Strange, isn't it? Mysterious, isn't it? Shameful, isn't it? Yes. There is corruption of the market. It's not just the money they were using, the market. The banking system has not emerged in, vac in a vacuum, isolation. No. It is a corruption of the market where now prices are no longer based on market prices. No. 
in addition to market price, you also have now have a markup, which is the RIBA component. In every single transaction, you're now paying a RIBA component. So the free and the fair market is destroyed. But tonight is not the night for us to speak on riba. There is corruption of the political system. <laughs> oh yes. And there is corruption of the social and cultural life. What is the price that these people will pay? <coughs> for the spiritual arrogance. Let us begin with a hadith which is located in Sahih Bukhari four times. So it is known as Mutawatir from the several chains of narration. But strangely these elite of the spiritual and religious world never, 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 never quote this hadith. No. <coughs> it is judgment day. And now this is a hadith al-Qudsi, direct speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says to Adam alayhi salam, take out the people for Jahannam, for the hellfire. And Adam alayhi salam asks, How many are they, O oh Allah? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replies and he says, Out of every 1,000, take 999 for the hellfire. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ were terrified when they heard this. So he, the Prophet ﷺ, then smiled at them and said, Good news for you. The one for Jannah would be from your ranks. A people who are humble, spiritually humble intellectually humble, socially humble, not arrogant, never assuming that they are the elite of mankind, that they are the chosen of the Lord Most High. Now it's not only the Jews, these are also the chosen of the Lord Most High. So he said, good news for you. The one for Jannah would be from you. But then he went on to say, in one version of the hadith, that the 999 would all be from Gog and Magog, indicating that this state of affairs will be located in Akhiru Zaman. This is not 999 out of every 1000 throughout history. This is 999 out of every 1000 in Akhiru Zaman, when the two major actors will be at work, Gog and Magog, corrupting and destroying, and Dajjal, with a PhD in deception. After listening to this hadith, are you still so confident? Are you still so confident, Jamaat Islami in Pakistan? Are you still so confident, Ikhwan in Egypt? Pati Islam in Malaysia? Hmm? Are you still so confident that you are rightly guided after listening to this hadith? When you do not even recognize to this moment that you are living in Akhir zaman I want to turn now to the link with Dajjal. Spiritual arrogance, intellectual arrogance, elite status, 
and the link with Dajjal. Is there, is it possible to establish that link? Yes, it, it can be done. So let's try. There's only one surah of the Quran, only one, which has been linked by Nabi Muhammad wasalam, to Dajjal. Which one is it? Suratul Kaf. Suratul Kaf. He said, recite the first ten ayat or verses of Suratul Kaf. And in another hadith, the last ten. And in a third hadith, the opening verses of Suratul Kaf. Over the Jalan, he will not be able to harm you. No. So there is a link between Suratul Kaf of the Quran and the Jal. There is a second link. And that is that Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam said every prophet has warned his people about the Jal. <coughs> And Nabi Nuh alayhi salam warned his people about the Jal. But I am going to tell you something no one ever said before me. The Jal sees with the left eye. He is blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grip. But your Lord is not one-eyed. Between his eyes, on his forehead, is written the word kafir. And uh, the definition of kafir is not non-Muslim. Eh? <laughs> Don't believe all non-Muslims. Uh, kuffar that's nonsense no between his eyes on his forehead is written the word kafir and every mu'min will be able to read kafir a mu'min is one who has not only accepted the truth but has so internalized it that it has entered into the heart and when it enters into the heart it's no longer belief it's now called faith what is faith in Bahasa? what's huh? a big word eh? <laughs> yes. when it enters into the heart it's no longer belief it is now faith I'm not going to try it <laughs> in Arabic Iman Iman so everyone who has Iman every mu'min will be able to read kafir whether he is katib or ghayru katib whether he is literate or illiterate so Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu would be able to read. But Abu Jahal will not be able to read. So we send Abu Jahal to the best optometrist it's called? The eye specialist? Yeah. The best optometrist there is. Examine his eyes. What's wrong? How come Ali can read? But Abu Jahal cannot read. 